episode of Beyond the Black Rims. I'm Mars Girl. I'm Josh Knight the First. Uh, this is season nine, episode twenty, or episode two ten if you're counting. Thank you guys so much for being here once again on a Saturday rather than a Friday. I'm kind of wondering if Saturdays aren't working out a little bit better for us lately. At the moment, yeah. At the moment, yes. Uh, yeah, maybe we should be saying that we're a Saturday show now. I'm just saying of, we're a weekend show. We're, okay, we're going into the weekend show. Sure, yes. that's exactly what we're doing. Hope you guys are doing well. Thank you so much for being here. We didn't make much of an announcement about it, but I'm glad that you're here all the same. Uh, what's going on, Josh? Uh, we are not at WonderCon. Not at the moment, anyway. Because no. they sold out. They sold out for Saturday, at least. Yeah. Yes. Um, at Friday, right before Friday, like maybe Thursday night or something, they sold out for their Friday badges. Um, yeah, Sundays so, are still a thing. We'll so, see. So, yeah. But we wish we were there for all the different things. Some of the things we'll be talking about. Oh, thank you so much, Sandman29331. I, I really appreciate that. Oh, thank you Super so much, kind Sandman. Of you. That's awesome. Just wanted to let you know I saw it, and I appreciate it. Yes. So, uh, yeah, WonderCon. Things are happening at WonderCon, some of which... Oh, thank you, AlternaVision, some of which we'll be talking about a little bit later. Haven't caught the show in a while. My five-month anniversary today as a subscriber. Well, thank That's you. That's awesome. Thank you for the sub. Really appreciate it. But you have been on a little purchase kick with these over here. Uh, I did get... Uh, a bunch of the Dragon Ball Super um, trading card game cards. Uh, we bought two of the starter decks and a whole bunch of the packs to try and build the second deck. And the second deck that I created wasn't really all that great, but actually I'm having quite a bit of fun with it. It's not bad, I gotta admit. Yeah. I, most card games I kind of shy away from because I'm not that big of a card collector. I'm mm -hmm. more of an action figure collector. Sure. Uh, but I was able to pick that up pretty quick, and I at least won one fight against you. You did, yeah. Uh, I, I think it's pretty easy to pick up. There's uh, a few things that you need to just remember to read before executing, but I think that's true of, yes. of any card game when you're starting to get into it and you're starting to learn how the mechanics work, you know. Now, speaking of action figures, I did go on a little bit of a hunt. I know it is not 420, but I did blaze it. Yeah, I, I made that joke. That Send was all super your, dumb. At Josh Knight first, me. Okay. Uh, this is Cyber Villain Blaze from Power Rangers Beast Morphers. Uh, I loved that suit ever since Go Busters. Uh, this is just evidence that the, the toys are now hitting shelves. I have yet to find the Beast X Morpher. It's out there in the wild somewhere. But... I haven't found one yet. Some well, people have. Technically, they're not officially technically out yet, but yes, they are. They're they're out they somewhere. Are. Some people have already done reviews, uh, but there's one other thing that we got that we kind of forgot we ordered uh, just to talk about for a second. Uh, yeah, so uh, a while back I had contributed to the Kickstarter of this game called Channel A. Mind you, this game already existed before. Right. Uh, there was one previous box of this that came out. Uh, and if you've never played it before, um, if you think of games like Apples to Apples cards or Cards Against, against humanity. humanity, where somebody is a judge and everybody else has to lay down cards and the judge has to pick what they think is the best cards, the point of Channel A is to throw down just words Words that are like just the names of of what could be the title of a random anime series. So like for example, like I'm just gonna pull a random card out here. Um, bizarre is the name of one word in here, and you just start like throwing out words like another card. For example, would be uh, Midori. So bizarre Midori. That's gonna be the name of our next anime coming out this season. We so, have to somehow shove that into the premise of Cat Girl. So you have to sell me on this premise of a Cat Girl series called Bizarre Midori. Um, and then what I really think is amazing about this release though is that they've introduced characters that sometimes you might have to shoehorn into this series. So they've got like, you can see some of the characters that they're trying to shoehorn in. Um, but this one in particular has got to be my favorite and his name is be shonen wheelchair on Myoji. Yeah, get him real close to the e camera there. Easily my favorite character that I hope I have to shoehorn into every single anime series from this point forward. It's going to be amazing. He's you can also favorite. throw in, uh, I don't know if you guys can see there, a Sentai hero. Uh, so this is going to be a lot of fun. Usually uh, it says to only play for a couple of rounds, but you we usually go on for hours playing this game uh, <laughs> because it's just so amazing all the different uh 
premises you can come up with for all these different wacky anime. Mm -hmm. uh, you can make the names of actual real anime based off some of the cards in here, but it's more fun to come up with your own original idea. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's one of my favorite party games of all time. So I'm absolutely. super glad that we ended up getting uh, that copy of that. Is there anything else going on that we need to talk about? Was Shazam last week or the week before? A actually, we did the show right before we went to go see Shazam. That's so right. we can talk about Shazam for we a second. We can kind of talk about Shazam for just a, a second. Uh, it's fun. Go see it. DC, you're finally on the right track. It um, was... I, it, honest to goodness, it's probably my favorite DC movie. It's within the top within, three for me easily. Within yeah. this I extended universe that they made. Yeah. Uh, because there are ties. Uh, but it's just... It, it, it Every review that I read was actually correct. It's fun. It's funny. It's got so much heart in it that I wasn't expecting. Right. Uh, the spectacle was there. They still suffer a little bit of that um, DC CG syndrome where yeah. it looks like a video game. Yeah, I, I hate that about them. However, Shazam was so fun, I did not give a crap. I no, really yeah, did not care. You don't care after a while because yeah. you just kind of buy into, okay, this is the story that's being told. Yeah. And honestly, like, it's, it's the first one in a while since I guess Wonder Woman, where I was like, I would see that again. Mm -hmm. I would purchase this on home video or a, a home release. Yes, absolutely. Uh, because like I, I like Wonder Woman enough, but it, it's like a prestige movie. And Aquaman's cool, but I didn't feel like purchasing it. Mm -hmm. This was worth it. This yeah. is worth multiple rewatches. Yeah, this is also one where I feel like um, the action and the special effects kind of are equivalent to what else is happening in the narrative, um, and they, they balance each other out, you know? They, they fit. They totally fit together. If they make a VHS version, I might get it just to be that hipster. Yeah, you're, you're going to be that hipster. I we, might. We've got a VCR lying around we somewhere. We do. It's in the other... It doesn't room. have a remote, you know, we'll figure I it out. I don't need one. I didn't operate with one all the time when I was a kid. I did. I did it by hand. Okay, cool. But that's that. Thank you. All right. Uh, but that being said, we've got a full show for you guys tonight, so we should talk to you guys about the stories that we're going to cover. Uh, so first off, uh, this has been going around the internet for the last like week or two now. There was a high school that put on a production of Ridley Scott's Alien, mm -hmm. and they did this all on their own budget. They didn't ask for any of the school's budget, and it's done really well. Yeah, shockingly. So it, it picked up a lot of attention, uh, got attention that was worthy of people who were involved with Alien. With so Ridley Scott, with Sigourney Weaver. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about what it looked like. We'll talk about what the response was. Uh, secondary uh, we've got another trailer to show you guys and talk about scary stories to tell in the dark uh, being worked on by Guillermo del Toro uh, based on a series of books that I have not read but I guess you might have dabbled in it at yes, some point. Yes, so, back in elementary school. So we're going to talk about it from like two different perspectives. If you read the book, let's see how this kind of compares to what you remember and me just coming at it as, oh, here's another Guillermo del Toro joint. Uh, what's he doing with this? Because right. this looks pretty fascinating to me. And then, of course, our last one for the evening has to do with something you care a lot about, yeah. uh, which was Sega Fest. Uh, a lot of different things going on with Sega Fest, but the biggest thing coming out of that is the trailer for a new Sakura Wars game. Yeah, and they're calling it Sakura Wars, and uh, they're really pushing it. Um, and my only concern is, does this mean we're going to get the other... Sakura Tyson games over in the United States eventually. That would be very nice. I don't know yet. We're going to talk about it. We are definitely going to talk about it. But until then, uh, before we get to those main stories, Josh, as always, I know you've got some follow-ups for us. Please tell me about That's them. That's what I'm here to do. All right, so let's go ahead and start off, of course, with always the DC news. So we're starting off with Batman news. So the first thing we'll show you guys is a picture from over at Gotham of the back of Batman's head because <laughs> that's really what we paid money to see if you're streaming it, you want to see the back of Batman's head. I, I guess. I guess. Uh, so this, of course, is our first official look at the Batman costume there for Gotham, which we will see in the last episode. Of course, uh, that those episodes won't pick up again for another two uh, weeks uh, there in April, and then we'll be done with Gotham. Good. <laughs> uh, along with that... Uh, this, of course, today is the 80th anniversary of Batman as a thing. And uh, going along with that, uh, Warner Brothers has gone ahead and given out uh, information on a Fathom event for putting the original four Batman movies, that's Batman, Batman Returns, Batman Forever, and Batman and Robin, mm -hmm. back in theaters this summer. That's pretty cool. Uh, so they haven't gone up yet on Fathom events, but be checking up on the site. They'll be starting in May. There'll be uh, two shows a day for each movie 
so Batman is one day, two showings. Batman Returns is the next day, two showings, so on and so forth. Okay, that's definitely something I think would be fun to that, check out with a bunch of people. That's very important to me because I was too young to watch the first two Batman movies in theaters. Right. So I definitely want to do that because I remember being there opening weekend for Batman Forever. That was the first one I could go see in a, in a theater. I remember my mom telling me I couldn't watch Batman Forever. There was nothing wrong with Batman Forever. I know that. Tell my mom that. Okay, I would. You, I know you would. I would. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, moving on to some other news. Some interesting news uh, coming out of the Arrowverse. So, of course, we broke to you guys uh, last week that Arrow is finishing its run, but somebody's not going to be there for the end of it. Just earlier today, actress Emily Bet uh, Rickards, who plays... Uh, Felicity there on the show says at the end of this season she will be exiting the show so mm. she will not be there for season eight crazy yeah now a lot of people are taking this as oh man I care so much about her character she's grown so much you know the relationship and other people are just like good <laughs> you ruined the show and I, I can see on both ends of the spectrum how that happened mm -hmm. how you came to that conclusion I'm just saying she's kind of okay given there's certain things they've already uh, put in to the ground there for the story to carry her over whether she's there or not for right. this last season. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and talk about some other interesting news here. Moving on to Marvel news. So we're going to talk a little bit about Endgame here because there's a lot of stuff building Just up. Just a little bit. We want to be really careful because we're getting into that, oh, what what's okay to talk about, what's not okay to so talk first about and foremost, territory. By most outlets, uh, most places are confirming that official Endgame merchandise, there are some leaking onto shelves, but the official drop date is supposed to be tonight, starting at midnight on the East Coast, 9 p.m. out here on the West Coast. Uh, so for some of you guys that have access to your Walmarts or Targets, you might want to go ahead and swing by there over the next day or two. They're going to start officially hitting shelves with that merchandise. We know about a Thanos toy. Yeah, the mm. Thanos hot toy. And the Iron Man hot toy, those pictures have already gone up officially. The uh, Iron Man, we've seen the way Iron Man looks already. I don't feel like that's especially spoilerish. Mostly the same thing with Thanos. He just has a new weapon, but that doesn't spoil anything. Mm -hmm. We know there's going to be another showdown. Uh, the other thing we have to show you that's actually a bit more important is this poster from China. I'm which go I ahead actually, and make it a little bigger here. Yeah, I actually like this poster better than the one we got. Because up at the top, it's all the survivors. And underneath, you see the silhouettes of everybody who got snapped away. Mm -hmm. And really, I think that's a better poster it now, sort of indicates that they're not gone you know because like their silhouettes are, are kind of telling us they'll be back now the important thing about that is because this is a chinese poster this goes along with the news that we got earlier this week that china will actually get end game two days earlier than we do that's nuts so you guys be careful already set your twitters and your facebooks to make sure to not be looking for spoilers those days if you don't want to get spoiled mm -hmm. i don't want to get spoiled i've been waiting 10 years for this mess yeah <laughs> i don't want that to happen so i might just have to peace out from the internet for a little bit as larry's saying here we know what ant-man is gonna do in end game yes that's uh <laughs> going along with that i wasn't gonna bring that up but i will I think say it's that important i think this is actually very uh, important if you go over to Josh Brolin's Instagram, who, who of course plays Thanos, he is already working on a plan to deal with Ant-Man. Let's just put it that way. I'm not going to say any more about it. Just go over to the to the Instagram, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, it's funny. It, it's it's funny. It's good. Okay, so moving on to some other Marvel news here. So over with Morbius, the Living Vampire. So there are already set photos coming out of uh, Jared Leto there on set as Morbius, and he just looks like him. Okay, cool. Like, there was no point in showing a picture. You would think it was just a normal picture of Jared Leto. Mm -hmm. it, it just looks like him any other day. Just imagine him, and that's Morbius. But does he look like the Joker? No. Okay, we're... It's fine. No, it's fine. he doesn't look like the Joker. Okay, cool. Uh, over on the New Mutants end of things, so actress Maisie Williams, who's there playing Wolfsbane in the movie, has been asked when she thinks the movie will come out, to which she says, I don't know when the hell, it, I, and I'm abridging this for broadcast, I don't know when the hell it's coming out, <laughs> uh, if it will ever come out. Uh, apparently she, along with many other fans, are very frustrated that the movie keeps getting delayed and delayed over and over again. It's supposed to have a street date of August, but at this point there's been a lot of rumors that it will go straight to either either DVD or get stuck on Disney streaming service. Mm. Uh, but it's not looking good. And apparently the supposed reshoots that were supposed to happen to make the film scarier never happened. <laughs> so uh, it's not looking good for that movie. It sure isn't. Because one, I don't. I never saw people really begging for a New Mutants movie. Like we wanted new good X-Men. Oh yeah, we're still going to want new good X-Men for a very long time too. 
Yeah, but this one, I, I didn't see the need. Very concerning. Very concerning. Okay, so moving on to some other news here over with Godzilla. So, of course, like we mentioned at the top, uh, right now WonderCon is going on over in Anaheim. Uh, the official Twitter account has been going off constantly all day that some new news is coming in. It's impending. It's going to happen any minute. As of this show, we haven't gotten anything yet. So I'm maybe... sure it'll be totally outdated by the time that we go like off air or it comes time to upload this to YouTube or whatever. Yeah, so we're hoping that tomorrow, since that's the last day of WonderCon, that'll be when the news drops. But if anything happens during the show, you guys in the chat... We're looking at you. Keep us keep us updated. Please we'll do, totally, yeah. We'll totally say something about it. Shoot us a tweet. All right, so let's go ahead and keep it moving here with uh, some interesting crossover uh, between two beloved franchises there uh, having anniversaries, uh, Mobile Suit Gundam and Hello Kitty. Yeah, that was weird. It was really, really strange. Hello Kitty is nice and sweet and adorable, and then suddenly on her TV set, she just sees the horrors of war in space, in space happening in front of her uh, as Amuro is just screaming in his RX-78, and she's just like, oh my god! A weird, really weird looking cross promotion happening right there. So there'll be a couple of these mini episodes that they're putting up on YouTube showing the cross promotion between the two. This is uh, the 40th anniversary and the 45th anniversary of the two franchises. Which one do you think is older? Uh, Hello Kitty. Yep, uh, yeah. that's older by five years. Yeah. Uh, so we'll be seeing more of that. There'll be other merchandise available later this year of Hello Kitty wearing like the RX-78 getup. Mm -hmm. uh, this, of course, is the second major crossover that I care about this year because they're also doing the Kamen Rider Deno crossover with Hello Kitty. So that's Hello nice. Hello Kitty will cross over with anybody. You remember when Hello Kitty crossed over with Kiss? You remember when Hello Kitty yes. crossed over with X-Japan? Hello I do Kitty just that. does this, all right? Yeah. Th this is just what she does. Uh, remember when Hello Kitty crossed over with Street Fighter and we had Hello Kitty dressed up as... Remember we, uh, we went to that one Sanrio place and they yeah. had that rare Chun-Li? No, no. Or was it Ryu? No, it was neither of them. It was... It was Bison. It was Bison. It was, it was Bison. M. Bison. That was what I was trying to say and you interrupted me. I was getting remember, there. I was they there. Had, they had Hello Kitty dressed up as M. Bison. Yeah, she'll cross over with anybody, man. She's she's dirty like that. <laughs> Don't call her dirty. So, I'm sorry. All right, uh, moving on to some other news. This was news that just broke right before the show started. Uh, so, of course, there's going to be a new Child's Play movie. Of course, that's uh, with the killer doll Chucky. Uh, they've rebooted it to where it's going to be not a demon-possessed doll, but an a doll that has AI that kind of went wrong. Uh, okay, I mean, so long as it serves the same purpose, okay, whatever. Now, we did find out just before the show who's going to be the new voice of Chucky. Of course, before it was Brad Dorif uh, doing the voice of Chucky for several, several years in movies. Now it's actually going to be good old Mark Hamill. Yeah, he was uh, really excited to be announcing this thing. He was really teasing people, like, I've got something to tell you guys a little later on tonight, and it just happened just before the show. Like, he said he... barely an hour ago, we found out. Yeah, that he's going to be the voice of Chucky. Really fascinating. I think Mark Hamill, he'll knock it out of the park. He'll well, make yeah, it he's... super creepy because he's good at that. Yeah, he's, he's super good. He's just a fantastic voice actor. In I general. mean, why wouldn't you want Mark Hamill voicing anything? If he could replace my voice, I'd let him. Absolutely. <laughs> you want Mark Hamill's voice? Yeah. Okay. Why not? It's uh, freaking Mark Hamill. All right, I understand. Okay, uh, moving on to some other news here. Of course, uh, earlier this week, we got the reveal of Borderlands 3. So we got a little screenshot from that from the trailer. Uh, this game in particular is boasting over 1 billion, that's billion with a B, guns. <laughs> that you can unlock in this game. Does not shock me considering I, I felt like it was weapon overload in the previous two games already. Um, so I'm... They have to outdo themselves as far as weapons are concerned. They have to. They don't have a choice. Yes. Otherwise, it's... it's. I mean, people would still love more Borderlands regardless, but come on now. More guns? Of course they're going to boast more uh, guns. Semi-related. Uh, many places are running out of eyeliner uh, for people making uh, <laughs> their cosplay to look like somebody came out of Gearbox. Yeah, to, to draw on the comic shading yes. on their own faces. Yeah. <laughs> so I I definitely want to pick this up. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess I'll pick it up for we, PC. We absolutely should go back and replay through the first two Borderlands. We should totally stream them before the third game I comes would do out. that. I would let's, definitely. Because I had so much that. fun with Borderlands 2. Yeah, I did too. We should, we should finish them We together. should do that. That yeah. should be a thing. All right, moving on to some other news here. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, Tenchi Muyo 
uh, Ryo Oki specifically was uh, an anime adaptation or additional anime that they added on. There's the original Tenshi Muyo, OEV, and then there was Universe and all the other ones. Well, apparently Ryo Oki, that particular one, is getting a stage play later this year. I mean, it's, it's I am shocked that of all of the really popular anime that came out of the 90s, that Tenshi Muyo didn't have stage plays right or or if they ever did it, d it just doesn't seem like i remember them or that there were a lot of them that it really took off i do recall uh there being a stage performance of the voice actors who came out and they sang like their um their character image songs i, I think i remember stage. seeing like really grainy youtube super, footage of that so is so 90s uh -huh. it hurts it's ridiculous it, it's really painful. Now, when you say so at. 90s, it hurts. I think of the old Sailor Moon musicals with the terrible costumes. Oh, this is this is bad too. These clothes. So it's on are, that level. These clothes are very bad. Okay, They're okay. They're very incredibly bad. They're. Yeah, I, I don't know if I want it. I don't know. <laughs> They're bad. Okay, uh, so moving on to some other news here. Uh, in Power Rangers news, so earlier this week, Battle for the Grid uh, did come out uh, for the Xbox One and the Nintendo Switch. A couple of people, really a lot of people, have been complaining that there are problems with the game uh, being very broken. People are on the fence of whether or not they want to go ahead and purchase it. We were considering purchasing it ourselves, but then we realized there was an issue specifically uh, with the character you wanted, which was Kimberly in yeah. or just a regular Pink Ranger outfit. Uh, at the outset, you're set up with nine potential player uh, playable characters there in the game, one of them being Ranger Slayer, who is an alternate version of Kimberly, not just regular old Kimberly. Out of the comics, yeah, the boom comics. Right, so th the thing I think is a little weird here is that Tommy as the Green Ranger and Tommy as alternate version Lord Draken are two separate characters, mm -hmm. but for Kimberly, Ranger Slayer is the character that you get when you buy the game, and you have to buy the skin for her to turn her back into normal Kimberly. And you can only get her skin if you get the bundle that comes with... Uh, the Collector's also, Edition. Yeah, the Collector's Edition bundle, which comes with uh, additional DLC, a second Dracon skin, um, another Red Ranger with the gold shield right. on the chest, uh, and then three more characters that are going to come out in May. That they haven't announced That they yet. have not yet announced. She can only be bought in that Collector's Edition as normal um, Mighty Morphin Pink. That's super frustrating to me. I'm hoping that later on down the road she will be obtainable by some other means. But right now, that's a dirty trick. It's a very to make dirty you spend trick another to make you spend another twenty dollars to get her. Um, it's very frustrating. Because otherwise, right. like, it looks like they should eventually have the option to just purchase a skin because, you know, I'm I'm spoiled by Overwatch. If I want a skin, I buy it. Oh, you can't purchase any of these skins individually no. either. They, they come in some other bundle. So frustrating. Doesn't make any Very sense. Very frustrating. Uh, on another bit of good uh, Power Rangers news actually coming out of WonderCon today uh, was the announcement of the new... Uh, event there for go go power rangers uh which is going to be called power rangers necessary evil uh the important thing about this is it's going to reveal the first time they're going to incorporate the white ranger into the comic and we have a picture of uh how he'll look there of course we already know who the white ranger is yeah we've known that since 94 uh beyond that uh it's going to be interesting to see they're saying that this new uh, event will also tie back into Shattered Grid somehow. Fascinating. I mean, I feel like all of these events, they're keeping to their own canon, mind you. They're not, like, creating totally well, separate it, canon from each other. Well, no, it, it's worth uh, noting that the normal Saban's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers comic and Go Go Power Rangers are two different uh, continuities. Okay. And then, because of but Shattered because Grid... But because of the grid, yeah, they're alternate dimensions... But alternate dimensions all come together during at some Shattered point. Grid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's all going to come together. That's going to be starting with issue forty coming out on June twenty sixth. Uh, so you guys want to go ahead and order that and get that ready. Everybody's very excited for the inclusion of the White Ranger because, mm -hmm. frankly, I'm sick of Lord Draken. <laughs> I'm. I'm gonna say it. I mean, yeah. Anybody who's like who likes other characters other than Tommy might say that, but Tom, I'm one of those people. Tommy is very popular, so. There's that. Okay. And the last bit of news here, uh, over in Ultraman news, uh, we've got a picture of the silhouette of the next Ultraman, Ultraman Taiga. Uh, so going into next month, we should be getting more pictures of him. Uh, we're also going to use this uh, to remind you guys that Monday, uh, April 1st, is the first day you'll be able to stream the new Netflix anime for Ultraman. Not a joke. Not a joke. Not a joke. It, 
whole thing's going to be loaded onto uh, Netflix. We're definitely going to be watching it. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, very much looking forward to that. So get with it. Act like you want it. Be on the lookout for Taiga and then the new Ultraman anime on Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's all we've got here for the follow-ups. Let's go ahead and get started with our first story of Alien. So uh, here's an image uh, just for, there was a little bit of footage that got out of this high school production. Some cell phone footage. Of Alien. Um, th like, this is a high schooler's costume for this. And, and I think it's really, really good, but I also feel like there's probably, like, some adults that have been working on this. Uh, somebody who was like, hey, I graduated and now I came back to help my high school's theater department put this on. That happens really frequently. Thank you, John, for the host. Um, I remember, you know, my high school theater, we had adults come back and uh -huh. help out our theater department. Regardless, it doesn't make this any less cool that this is happening well, on a stage. Well, based off everything that we've seen online, let's go ahead and uh, get some things uh, laid out here. So this is the North Bergen High School Drama Club. Earlier this month, they put on this production of the 1970 movie. Uh, apparently, they did this with recycled materials, so they didn't dip into the school's budget to do this. That's fantastic. Yeah, one that's green. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're not waste. You know, leaving a carbon footprint or anything. You know, it's very important now. But the fact that they had the ingenious ability to create. What really looks like a winning Xenomorph costume sure, yeah. right here. Uh, apparently they were using tracks from the original score for the movie uh, to makes do sense. this. Uh, I have to imagine, I know my theater department uh, was incredibly sticklerish about uh, the rights to mm -hmm. be able to perform said play. Uh -huh. um, did they have the rights to use Alien? I don't know if they had the rights, but they certainly now have the blessing. Yeah. Uh, so as we were kind of mentioning at the front, there have been two people who have been very vocal about how well the uh, production has gone. One of them, of course, being Sigourney Weaver, who, of course, played Ripley in the Alien movies. She had a video. She, she published a video uh, uh, about Praising him. them yeah. and their ingenuity and the ability to put this one on. And, of course, the director and creator, Ridley Scott. Pretty friggin' fascinating. Who that's, also... That's uh, super high praise. You can't get higher praise. He, he even says at the end of his letter, how about you and your team uh, next do Gladiator? Oh, my God. That's, that sounds Like, incredible. I don't know if you could do Gladiator as a stage play, uh, but just going into this, having... Are you not entertained? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so going into this, we've seen some of the footage ourselves, and it's good. Yeah. It's, like, I've seen performances at cosplay competitions that looked much worse. Mm. I've been in in uh, stage plays that could have needed some help. These guys knew what they were doing for a high school production. Right. Well, he, okay, here's my question. Uh, how well off is this school? I want to know how well that off is That is a good question school. because if you have access to different materials, you're going to get a different product. Sure. Now, admittedly, my I, I know I had a different experience. My uh, theater teacher, one when it came to the rights to doing certain things, like I remember uh, we did a – we didn't do the whole thing, but we did a review of Rent. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of us asked uh, – um, uh, Mr. Rima, he, he was my teacher. Uh, did we get the rights cleared for this? And it's like, we're, we're just not going to worry about that. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're just a rinky dink high school. You know, let's just do the thing. You know, it's going to, it's gonna, it's one night only. It's going to be fine. Wow, okay. And so you don't really worry about that. But there was one thing that he taught us, which was how to be ingenious, looking at different things, taking them apart and putting them together in a different formation. Kind of like... Uh, how they showed in the Lego movie, how yeah. Emmett could look at a, a to Lego be an, building. An imagine, not an imagine. Well, use your imagination. A Disney, a Disney imagination. Use your imagination to pull things apart and put them together in a different. A builder form. to be a builder. Yeah. To be a master builder. That seems to be what they've done here. And one thing I absolutely have to give them props for is that looking at that, I can't tell what they used. Yeah, there you go. That's that's very true. Because I've seen enough fan productions. Of any number of things, Batman, uh, Star Trek, uh, even Power Rangers, where people try to make their own costumes or original creations, and you can tell that's an Iron Man helmet, uh, that's a Batman belt, that's a Nerf blaster, that's a Nerf blaster, that's a big, that's a big one that keeps happening, and it's and like watch, watch some sci-fi channel sometime. Nerf blasters everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> You'll see the Nerf long shot and the Nerf Maverick more often than not. Yeah. Uh, but the thing of it is, like, if you're gonna put that much effort into your thing cover up your seams you know it's like when they say in a cosplay competition don't tell us 
about the things that you failed on. Tell us about the things that you did really well on. Right. And most of the time, we won't even ask about it. It's kind of the same thing here. Looking at it, it really, it's an ingenious product. I know we don't have a video here, but they've also got the nice uh, wire work on the tail to keep it afloat and That's bouncing. That's really cool, yeah. Which is smart. I've seen a lot of people do that in cosplay competitions or just in masquerade there on the floor. Yeah, they're using techniques that cosplayers would use... Uh, to compete with. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing. I, I dare say there's got to be more than a handful of cosplayers who worked on this thing. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Now, part of it, too, I think, is the time period that we're seeing this in. Because, one, you have to see that the students and probably the drama teacher had to have a love for this movie sure. to do it this many years removed. Uh, but on top of that... Uh, it's the fact that you're doing it, and you're doing it with this much love. It's like, hey, we want to put this on, we want to put this out there, and we want to do the best possible job. Looking at it, like, I would have paid, like, I know, you know, if it's a high school show, you're paying, like, what, five, ten you bucks? You might, you might You pay. might pay five bucks. Right. Mm -hmm. I would have paid twenty bucks for this. Like, this looks legit. Yeah. And the thing is, if you're sitting there for an hour and a half, I bet you anything you would have been entertained by this. Oh, and, I'm sure. And it makes me wonder, like... How do they outdo themselves here? They because have to now, start doing other theatrical productions of of Hollywood movies. Because really. I remember uh, there was a movie that came out several, several years ago called Hamlet 2. <laughs> and in yeah. that movie, yeah. jokingly, uh, the theater pro uh, is producing a stage play of... What was it Aaron Brockovich, I think it was, in that particular one? Mm -hmm. And it just, it didn't work. And that was the joke. Yeah. Uh, but here it's like, no, they actually put on a stage play... And made it work. And now the whole world knows about it. Yes. So I'm over here thinking just for a couple of minutes, what would you put on after this to have people come out and be like, oh yeah, that was really good. I, did you see their Dune. last one? Dune. You can't do Dune as a stage play. But you don't want to see the worm? No, what? I would love to see the worm. And I know how you would do the, do the worm. Uh, you would get one of those collapsible um, laundry basket circular uh -huh. things and you would uh -huh. just kind of put a bunch of them together. Or you could use pool noodles. Uh, that That's one way of doing it. Okay, but see, cool. that that's the cool thing about it. You're going to have a bunch of people basically sweeting their way to make different effects. Really, I think what the best option would be uh, would be a high school production, this quality, of Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. It would be amazing. Because think about it. You could totally use basic well, technology. Well, it would be it would be really cool to see it um, right after something so serious like Alien go to something so comedic like Ghostbusters. Because think about be cool. it. Everything that, cool. that you need to make Ghostbusters is easy. Because if the kids from Stranger Things could put their own fairly decent proton packs together, surely a high school can do it. You mm. can do the laser effects, you know? Yeah. Just trail spotlight all over the all over the screen. You have those Christmas and Halloween blow up Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Sure, sure. You could totally do it. And then afterwards have a reception of marshmallows. <laughs> oh, that, that makes sense, yeah. Make some s'mores. Yes, and, and that's a good thing too. Before this, the only legit one we had was the Evil Dead stage play, Evil the Dead musical. Sta Mind you, uh, remember Takata Zuka, the all-female Japanese uh, musical theater troupe, has frequently done uh, musical adaptations of Hollywood movies. Like, they've done Casablanca, for yes, example. Yes, yes. Yeah, these things happen. They get made into stage productions, musicals even. Question is, can they get their theater department to work with their choir department and actually make a musical on this level happen? That, I need to know. Because now, now I'm thinking about it. You remember, what was that one episode of Bob's Burgers where they blended Working Girl and Die Hard? Yeah. That, yeah. This is what we're talking about here. Somebody did... Half the work, and you're saying you want somebody to do the other half and bring in the choir and make it a musical. Yeah, yeah. If they did, what if they just did Alien again and it was a musical this time? I don't know if it would work as a musical. Now, if you turn Ghostbusters into a musical, I would watch Ghostbusters that. Ghostbusters could be a musical. Ghostbusters could sure. totally be a musical. Ghostbusters 2, maybe? It's, it's, there was a little more music in that. Sing, sing a little bit about uh, uh, what what is name of painting. Uh, v Vigo. Vigo, sing a little bit about Vigo. Vigo yeah. needs his own song. Vigo needs a song. Get Lin Manuel Miranda on this mess; it'll be amazing. You get Lin Manuel Miranda to work with a high school? He would do it. Do you think he would? He's such a good guy. <laughs> he is. He He's really, a really is. Good guy. But the thing of it is, like, there's so many different opportunities now 
you're going to have, if it hasn't happened already, next fall, you know, when school's starting back up again. Because for my money, most uh, high schools have either already been deep in a rehearsal for whatever their spring show sure, is. Sure. Uh, so they don't have many more to come. But start next fall, you're going to have people coming into theater class being like, hey, so what movie are you guys putting on? Yeah. Can we do Guardians of the Galaxy? Can we do that? <laughs> can, we, can we do something like that? Can we do The Blob? Now, I would imagine if you can sell that to somebody like we know how to do the effect, uh -huh. then you could potentially do it. I remember when I was in college, I in vain tried to get my college theater troupe to do a stage play version of Airplane. And that didn't work. Mm, that's a shame because Airplane is practically, like, the way it's shot, which is done on purpose, it, it's shot like Zero Hour because yes. it's a parody of, of the older movie Zero Hour. And those are, quite frankly, just teleplays. Movies right. that old are, quite frankly, just teleplays. And the thing about it was I had it broken down to where, really, Airplane only has three sets. Yeah. You know, you've got the cockpit, you've got the, the main body of the plane, and then you've got the airport where... McCroskey and everybody is trying to figure out how to get him down. Mm -hmm. And then you have, like, a different area for all the flashbacks that Ted has. Uh -huh. So you could do it. Jurassic Park would be a fantastic stage play. I would love to see that. Because yeah. then you would have... Look, if they, can make, if they can make the Xenomorph, they can make a T-Rex. You Give could a make break. a T-Rex. They can make... make some raptors. They could easily make some raptors. Shoot, I remember when I did Beauty and the Beast, we had people just there in wolf costumes, mm -hmm. you know, tearing at Beast when he's trying to protect Belle. You could totally have that with raptors. 100%. Have them come through the audience. It would be amazing. 100%, yeah. So really what I hope this does is it brings in a renaissance of movie high school plays. <laughs> uh, I've, I've lived in the wrong time, clearly, because we weren't doing... The, I, I did uh, Get Smart in my high school, my senior year, we did Get Smart. So that's the closest we came to, like, this was on TV. Yeah. And then we made, a, we did the stage play version of it. And I thought it was very, very good, very entertaining. Uh, but it, we were so far removed from Get Smart. Uh-huh. You know, so I, I don't know. I feel like most people at that time hadn't seen, of our generation had not seen Get Smart. Uh, and that movie hadn't come out yet. Get oh, no, it'd be years and years before we got the Steve Carell version. Yeah, so my generation did not care about Get Smart. I kind of did because my dad loved Get Smart, and so I would watch like, it. I loved it because I, I had Nick, Nick at Night. Night. Yeah. yeah, I loved Nick at Night. I loved Get Smart. So, like, we were just in the wrong time to be doing this. Now there's so much more access to here's how you make this, that, and the other thing. That's People, the other thing I wanted to say. Because cosplaying? is now uh, much more widely accepted and you mm -hmm. can just look up information about making all sorts of costumes and costume pieces and, and people are just doing this casually and not getting nearly as shamed for it as you might have Well, yeah, because you think past. about it, we couldn't do that when we were in high school or even when we were in college, but now, one, uh, because we live in a wider nerd culture mm -hmm. uh, where it's, like you're saying, out in the open, everybody goes to see a superhero movie every other month, Yeah, and now all this information is out there on YouTube, on Reddit, you can look up how to make this stuff or watch how somebody chronicled, hey, here's how I made my costume. Half the work's already done for you. Right. Uh, so, yeah, really it's a product of the time that they get all of these advancements that they can put on a play like this. I would agree, yeah. Uh, so, really, big ups to them. Uh, I look forward to whatever your next one is. And you know you have to beat this one because nobody's going to let you live this one down. Yeah, but if, if like the seniors can't possibly go out on anything better than this. This no, it's it. great for them. This, de this defines them. <laughs> yeah, it defines them until, you know, they graduate, they come back to visit friends the next fall, and then they tell them they're putting on Ghostbusters the musical. <laughs> then they're going to be jealous. Maybe. We'll see. And then maybe the theater teacher lets them do tech. Uh, but we'll see how that turns out. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to our second story, which is uh, Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, the first teaser. Yeah, make sure. That okay. We don't have any other extra audio playing this week. All right. I managed to get that correct before we started the show. You're hey, doing good. Guillermo del Toro's doing this new thing. It's based on this old thing. How old is Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark? So the first of the books was released in 1981. Okay. Uh, so when I was in school, it was about 10 years after that. That's when I first saw the books there on the shelves. And I think I saw some people here in the chat talking about it. Yeah. It was very hard to come by because kids saw... The first thing you see on that that covers the really screwed up looking clown. Yeah, yeah. And everybody's like, oh, what is that? Because usually 
it, and maybe it was my experience, kids hated going to the library for the most part. <laughs> I liked going Unless to the library. Unless you were, you know, really into books and Scholastic Book Fair. But for the most part... You know, you didn't really like reading unless it was something that really caught your attention. Sure. And those covers with that grotesque art always got kids' attention. And that one was always uh, rented out. Yes. At, at my library. Checked out, yeah. We weren't lucky. We didn't get Goosebumps books in our library. They wouldn't allow really? it. Really? No No, kidding. they would sell Goosebumps at Scholastic whenever they would have the book fair, but we couldn't, they weren't in the in the actual library We proper. had a small selection of Goosebumps, but they were always checked out goosebumps was always checked out because the thing about it is it's interesting when you consider that even from a very young age kids have an interest in horror mm -hmm. and i think when you frame it right I, there were so many people i went to school with who like were reading pet cemetery way too early oh yeah yeah, yeah. like middle schoolers like they're from i'm on the bus with these people like what is this this, this phone, phone book, book you're bringing onto the bus. You know, it's Pet Cemetery. It's about this, these scary dogs. What? I don't want to read this. No, what are you I, doing? I remember I had uh, a friend of mine who was reading Christine oh my in God. like sixth grade. No. Like, <laughs> like, what are you doing reading Christine? <laughs> like, I thought we were playing G.I. Joe's and Power Rangers. What's going on here? <laughs> uh, but no, this is one of those books that uh, once I did get to read it, I was a scary cat as a kid. So. I read it, and then I, I immediately took it back the next day. Uh-huh. Because I got freaked out real easy as a kid. Yeah. Uh, so based off that, I, other people found out about it. And since be, it's been out for so many years, somebody like Guillermo del Toro finds out about it. And he's like, I'm going to produce this joint. I was going to direct it, but I'm going to let you know, somebody else handle it. I got you my hands no, on it. Being pro producer, yeah, it means you get your hands in the creation of it, you know. Directing it, you go, I've got an idea, but who can I get to do the idea for me? And then being the producer is like, I can make the idea happen. Yeah. You know? So I think Guillermo del Toro as a producer is almost better than him being a director, quite yes. frankly. Now, uh, the way the movie is being set up, as you can kind of see here in the background, is it's actually taking place in the 60s uh, during, uh, you know, that nicer time. Uh, but what's nicer, going on? Yeah. Nicer, but apparently there's a woman there who wrote the scary stories that are all in the books, and uh, they're kind of coming to life. Mm -hmm. Not too dissimilar from the Goosebumps movie, but this looks good. Yeah. Uh, because I get it, Jack Black needed a paycheck. I mean, the Goosebumps <laughs> movies also were not. They they're not. They're about the books, but they're not about the books. Well, because you know? it was always my opinion, Goosebumps was never meant to actually be scary. I I think they were meant to be creepy, not scary. scary. Yeah, because th there is a difference. Because some Goosebumps books, like the early early ones, like Haunted Mask, yeah, those could be creepy. Uh, any of the ones with Slappy, mm -hmm. but after a certain point, they were just kind of like really weak, watered down. Outer Limits or Twilight Zone? Mind you, I think uh, better R.L. Stein books included, like, uh, I think Beast is the, the name of... I think he did Beast 2. Uh, just a couple of books... I forgot he did that one. Yeah, ab about the roller coaster, the wooden roller coaster. I remember coaster that, yeah, yeah. On, I think, Coney Island or, or something like that. Yeah. And then the roller coaster, like, sends these two teenagers, like, back in time. In time, yeah. I remember um, reading that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, though that I think was a significantly better story. No, that was a good one. Uh, that and the fact that it's just this kind of one-off. It's not part of Goosebumps. It's not part of any other. Like he did two other, I think, series other than Goosebumps. He I think. did. He did give yourself Goosebumps, and then what was the name of? Like he had a slightly aged uh, up series. I know, I, I know I what it was called, but I can't, I keep thinking that it was called The Scary Door. But I know that's just the parody name of the Twilight Zone in Futurama. But that's besides the point. <laughs> anyway, so for this movie, uh, they're adapting several of the stories into this uh, into this movie. Uh, let me go ahead and pull up the list here. Most of them are from the first book. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. It uh, looks like they're doing. If I'm understanding correctly, the Dead Man's Brains, uh, the Big Toe, that's definitely one that they're doing. The Ghost with the Bloody Fingers, we got a little taste of that. And the thing about it is... Things... Fear Street, thank you, Amelia. Fear Street, that's what it was. Fear Street was Fear the one Street. that's for a slightly older audience than Goosebumps. Anyway, by all means, please continue. Going into this, I think it's going to be kind of deceptive because when you go into this and you say based off the acclaimed children's book series, and it's like... This was for kids. No, hey, we what, were kids and we were thinking that. That's what this I'm saying. This is for like, us. I'm looking at this trailer and I'm going, this 
this looks like for people my age, not for people who were my age when the books were coming out. Yeah. You know? But I think in a weird way, this is the thing that some of our generation kind of wanted where it's like, man, I want my, my thing to grow up with me and get dark. Here it is. There you go. I mean... And it's not even it's, that it got dark. It was always dark and somebody knew how to bring it to the screen. And that's Guillermo and del that's Toro. Guillermo. Because like he's just this master of... Uh, visionaries with with just creepy creature creation, uh, you know. Yeah, the grotesque and the macabre and things like that. So yeah, w once I heard that he was working on this, I've been very excited. And you know, I don't really like horror, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna see this. Yeah, I mean, this doesn't look like it's gonna have a whole bunch of bleh, just just jump scares. This doesn't look like a jump scare kind of a movie. To yeah, me. because like having just gotten out of seeing us, which you can ask me about in the post show. Uh, this is more my speed mm -hmm. when it comes to horror. Because it doesn't need to be psychological. Right. It doesn't need to be anything more than what it is. This is like, no, we're scaring a bunch of kids in a small town. Sure, sure. And I know that's going to be really close to It. And that, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, It was the only other one where I saw it in my middle school library. And then retrospect, it shouldn't have been there. Oh, it absolutely should not have been there. No. No, no, no. It's specifically it for the scene in qu or the, the, the event in question mm -hmm. that people mostly know about. That does not end up in, in this movie. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, Mind you, um, with it, with the movie that came out, uh, and of course now we're getting the sequel relatively soon. In, in the fall. In the fall. Um, people like to split hairs about whether or not it is a horror movie. Uh, it, or oh, if, I believe or it's absolutely it's, a horror movie. Or if it's movie. just a thriller kind of a movie is this another movie here where people are going to be split as to whether it's horror or it's just no thriller? this is horror you, this, is, this horror. is horror like okay uh misery is a thriller okay it is horror okay because we're dealing with death we're dealing with uh things from beyond it's horror mm -hmm. through and through and this is horror for kids but it was horror proper sure sure and the thing about it was it was smart relying on uh you know, just uh, urban myths and things like that in the time, and so I'm actually kind of thankful that Blumhouse didn't get a hold of this because mm -hmm. they've kind of they're milking out the urban myth thing to death. They're also the kings of jump scares. They all so. they are also the kings of jump scares, and because it's Guillermo, I know they're not going to rely on it. Oh, absolutely not. Because jump scares, if you're into jump scares, fine. For my money, it's cheap. It is 100. percent And I want the atmosphere. I want that oozing feeling of oh dread. I, I am I, uncomfortable. I am uncomfortable yeah. right now. So I fully believe this is going to deliver on that. That's coming out later this year. Uh, definitely get with that. Uh, if you want to catch up on the books, I looked this up right before the show. There is an audio version of all three books put together that you can go look up on YouTube and you can just catch up on all of it in one sitting. Super cool. Yeah, if you're too busy to just sit and read them yourself, if you're like me and you're in a car for an hour every day. Yeah, yeah. and we all listen to podcasts now, so you can totally just listen to that, listen to all the stories, get it into your system, and be ready for this movie when it comes out later this summer. Exciting. Super exciting. Yes. So we got one more story left. Uh, and so right happening right now is Sega Fest over yes. in Japan, the Sega Festival. Uh, and just there's all kinds of cool things coming out. We can talk really briefly about... Um, the like biggest the, thing being the Mega Drive Mini. The, the Mega Drive slash Genesis Minis. Yes. You know, um, of course, depending on what region you're in, that's going to determine which one you're actually getting. Um, that's... Probably the one that has the most people around the world excited. Thank you so much to Erwin Richter over on YouTube for the subscription. Really appreciate it. Um, but what we're excited about over here is we got some Soccer Wars news. Not Tyson. Not Ty I mean, it is Soccer Tyson. I mean, but, it is. But, but, they're, but they have officially put English into this title for Soccer Wars. So um, we need to kind of go back... Did you continue. check the audio on this one? Uh, do we have audio? Have it? Yeah, we've got no audio okay, on good. here. We're good. We're good. So Stop. to back it up, uh, we're talking Dreamcast, right? No, we're talking uh, Saturn. Saturn, Saturn, which is why, remember, uh, you might remember Sega Tassanchiro, who, by the way, is at Sega Fest this weekend. Right he, now, Hiroshi Fujioka, he, uh, he the performed, GOAT. He performed his theme song with uh, uh, Takenobu. Um, he did the Daytona 
uh, the guy do, who do, sings do, 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 Daytona. So they're yeah. on stage together performing Sega Ta San Shiro, Sega Ta San. Now you'll remember uh, among Sega Ta San Shiro's many commercials that he did for the Sega Saturn, that included a commercial with Sakura from Sakura Tyson. Uh, it was specifically a commercial for Sakura Tyson 2. Uh, they're my one and only OTP. Sakura and Sega Tassanchiro, the only ones. Sakura-san. Kachi Sa- <laughs> <laughs> All the, the cherry yeah. blossoms thrown up in the air. So that's where I first learned about Sakura Tyson, right? So f- there's four mainline games that have never come out in the West. One, right. two, three, and four. The fifth one, uh, So Long My Love, like it features... That was the Wii, right? It came out on the Wii and the PlayStation 2? I want to say, uh-huh. um, but yes, it, here in it's the West, the only one of those five that ever came out here in the West. Uh, so we're missing a whole bunch of Sakura Wars. This one that is being called Sakura Wars in English, um, it's the sixth in the line. It happens ten years after the events of that fifth game, um, and sh- this is. A, a group of people who are predecessors to the original team from the first series of games. Uh, this game is coming to the West. That's the exciting part about it for us Westerners. Mm-hmm. It is, in fact, actually coming to the West. Uh, we know that they uh, are taking... This is taking place in the same opera house, the same theater house that uh, the original couple of games took place in. We know Sumire is the one who... Uh, you remember the character Yoneda? He yes. was the one basically giving all the girls all these... The com- drunk manager. The drunk manager. He was the manager of this theater house. Uh, Sumire, from the original cast, is now the manager. Oh, I didn't know that. She is now the man. So that part is exciting. It means we will probably see other characters from the original cast come back and cameo so, in this game. So to put it in perspective, basically what's happening for those... Those of you who aren't familiar is this is set in old timey Tokyo, like circa nineteen early nineteen hundreds, yeah, early nineteen hundreds. Uh, we, we're dealing with a cast of characters, literally a cast of characters uh, who work in a theater production house, but that's just a cover for them being a secret. A uh, government organization that fights off different threats using these kind of steampunk... Supernatural kind of threats, monsters, demons, and, and stuff like that. And they do that using these steampunk-esque mechas called Kobu. Yeah, uh, they're kind of steam-powered, but also especially powered through... Uh, they've got a soul, like spiritual... Like fighting spirit sort spiritual of Spiritual power. And mostly only women have it. And usually, like, this is run... You are playing one male character that, for whatever reason, has that same spiritual soul power. So it's this combination of... Um, a dating sim? A, a dating sim. There's kind of some dating sim elements in it, and you can see some of that in this trailer uh, where you've got some commands when you're talking to this new character. And it's uh, also a, an RPG strategy. Yeah, tactical RPG. So uh, thank you so much for the cheer, John. I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, especially the first game, you've got this tactical isometric view. Um, I don't know that we've seen in this trailer. Do we see much of the way this gameplay works? No, we're that... seeing a lot of cinematics yeah. of the new Kobu that look a bit more upgraded. Uh, we see them. I can't even tell what they're fighting, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, like some people are mentioning here in the chat, uh, the character design in this game is being done by Tite Kubo, who is the creator of Bleach. Mm-hmm. Uh, so a lot of the character designs are going to look very similar to those characters. Uh, if you're into Bleach, this might be a way to get you into this game. Uh, we streamed a little bit of it ourselves. Yeah, but uh, it's so frustrating because, again, never the first four games have never been localized into English. There are some fan translations out there, but they're all through text only. There's mm-hmm. no fully completed patches for the Saturn or Dreamcast or PlayStation 2 or PSP re-releases of these games. Now, that should tell you something that the game has been re-released that many times over in Japan because it is a huge thing over there. It spun off all this different merchandise. So many stage, stage plays. shows, they had a, a cafe running for like 15 years. Yes. Uh, I'm so sad. It just like, barely closed down. It closed down within the last few years. Within the last two years, I think. Two, uh, three years. I want to say it was before that, but I've definitely been to Japan in the amount of time... 
uh, since it had been open and I didn't realize it was open and it was a mistake for me not to go. It was a huge uh-huh. mistake for me to have missed it. Uh, Sakura Tyson's a really frigging big deal, and the fact that it has not been over here is uh, really baffling uh, that it only has come over here in the form of that fifth game, or you see the cameos in Project Cross Zone. Uh, that's about the extent of it. Uh, I was totally going to mention one other thing, too, and now I can't recall what that was going to be. So this is going to come out over here in spring 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are hoping that along with this we'll get some information about a sort of remaster or re-release of the older games. And that's what I was going to say, because we said, I think we said last week possibly, I'm not too sure, Sega had that uh, survey. We did, we did. We, we talked about the survey last week, and they mentioned more stuff about Yakuza, which people were freaking out about, like, yes, more Yakuza, and they were including stuff about Sakura Wars. And now you could interpret that now as, oh, they just wanted to know whether or not Maybe you want this new Sakura Wars game. And a lot of people are saying, they're trying to tell Sega, hey, we want the new game, but we also want the old games. Can you do that for us? I am hoping at some point over the course of this weekend, or maybe sometime after this weekend, before the release of this game, that Sega does us a solid and lets us see the previous games because there's going to be references to those first four games in this game, and they're not going to make any sense to the Western audience playing it. Now, I do appreciate you bring, bringing that up here, Billy. There was an anime adaptation of that first game, yes. uh, which you can watch over on Verve. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have a subscription, you can check it out over there. Uh, it's on DVD. It's not uh, a good. It's not a great dub. The dub is not fantastic. No, it's it's really not. Uh, Kana is one of my favorite characters. She's this uh, strong martial artist from Okinawa. But they made sure that the woman voicing her. Del- Deliberately dropped her voice to sound like this. It's terrible. Absolutely Yeah, it terrible. doesn't fly anymore. But the anime is, is overall is really fun. It it is it follows the original game somewhat faithfully, not perfectly, but faithfully. Eighty five percent. Um, there's a manga that was published in the United States, which by is Tokyo out of print. Pump. It's out of print, but it was published in English in the United States, so it is very findable. Um, I don't typically advocate piracy. But it was being sold and is now no longer being sold. So you can because find it's it. out of print. You know there are ways to find it. You can check out gameplays uh, over on YouTube of people mm-hmm. going through the different games. Uh, like you were saying before, there was the Japanese branch, the Texas branch, and the French branch. Uh, those are the focuses of the different games. And now I'm we're not, coming back to Japan. And now we're coming back to Japan, which I prefer. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm wondering just how heavy they're going to rely on the lineage here because it's been a minute. It's been a hot minute since they have put something out new for Sakura Wars. Yeah, this is exciting to those in Japan, too, because they're like, yeah, it's been 10 years since the release of a mainline Sakura Wars game. Uh, so the Japanese are equally as excited, probably more excited than we are, because they have reference. And we just don't to- know. It, it's basically, in that weird sense, it's kind of like how we would relate it to to Common Rider. Mm-hmm. Like, it's such a big thing over in Japan, and we know nothing, next to nothing about it over here in the yeah, States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, hopefully people can get a... Uh, get into it, be made aware that this is a thing, this is a game you can enjoy, it's a really fun series. I can't, I can't explain to you guys just how much, for whatever reason, I got really attached to this game, and I think all of the characters are just very, very well written. I feel like, you know, even for it being semi-dating sim, uh, all the women are written very well. I think they're written extremely well even iris uh iris is kind of like she's a little girl i mean how well are you gonna write a little girl who's got like brain powers and she holds a teddy bear i mean okay she's she's a tiny child she hasn't had enough depth and time to become an in-depth person yet Uh it just hasn't happened yet um she's my least favorite perhaps Uh but uh i I just got so attached, and I remember I brute-forced my way through the first game with what little Japanese I understood at the time, and I played it on my uh, Sega Saturn that was modded so that I could play Japanese games, and um, also my battery for saving the game did not work. I could not save my game, so I left my Saturn on for like a week 
I left it turned on for a week and was like, never turn this off, don't ever unplug this, I need to beat this game. And I did, I beat it, and then I was like, after a week, after leaving the Saturn on for a whole week, I was like, wow, I can finally turn it off. But, but that's how... We that's eventually how it replaced grows. it, though. Yeah, it needs to be replaced again. It, it probably needs to be it replaced again. It needs to be replaced again. It's amazing. I think you should play it. I think if you can manage to find a version of the original game and just follow the guide that's there on GameFAQs, I think you should. Uh, and just be prepared to enjoy this game when it comes out later on. We don't know exactly next year. when. Next year. But we don't have an exact date as of yet. Uh, no, I do believe we do. We, uh, we have an exact street date? Really? Uh, let me pull it back up here. Oh, no, no, we don't. It no, just says spring, spring 2020. Yeah. Be excited about this. Please, I want to talk to more people about Soccer Wars. I think this is really fascinating. You should be excited like I am. Yes. Yeah. All right. And that's the show. That's basically the show. All right. Hey, what? No, not scary stories. No, not again. No. Oh, God, no. <laughs> no, not like that. <laughs> anyway. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us this evening. I really appreciate you being here, especially on a Saturday without a whole big announcement. Maybe we're going to start doing Saturdays more often. We'll see. This just seems to be working out for us. If you are not here with us live right now, uh, thank you so much for watching this over on YouTube. Really appreciate you being here. It would be super cool if you could make it down here uh, on the weekends and be with us. If you uh, subscribe over here on Twitch, of course, you'll get the notifications in your email inbox as to when we go live. And you can hang out with all these cool people in the chat room here. And uh, we'll be chatting with you guys for an additional half an hour, which is something that over on YouTube, you're just not going to get to see. Yes. And of course, during the week, you can always talk to us over on social media. On Twitter, I'm at Josh Knight First. And I'm at Mars Girl. And that having been said, that's been tonight's episode of Beyond the Black Rims. We will see you guys again next episode. Thank you, everybody.